So this is part two of the same Jesse Limited question. We did 3.2.1 and 3.2.2 in the previous video. So the information relates to Jesse Limited here. Um, and Mike Stearman is like, yeah, oh, guys, I did such a good job as CFO. Uh, and we're just checking to see if he's correct. So 3.2.3, .3, risk and gearing. So some shareholders feel that Mike was reckless when he increased the loan by 3.35 million soon after his appointment as CFO. Why are you incurring all this debt? And explain why you do not agree with them. So when we discuss loans, there are two ratios that we need to look at, that we need to scrutinize. Firstly is the debt equity ratio. That's number one. Second is ROT C, return on total capital employed. These need to be scrutinized. They need to be compared. So the debt equity ratio, it increased by just 0 0,1. It went from 0 0,2 to 0 0,3. It's, it's minor. It's nothing hectic. Return on total capital employed, it increased from 7.5% to 16.9%. So to discuss the debt equity ratio first, we're still very lowly geared. There's a low financial risk and we're not relying too much on borrowed capital. Debt is to equity is quite low. And return on total capital employed, we are positively geared. And we've gone from 7.5% to 16.9%. That is the return on our loan the return on, on investment that we've made utilizing our debt fund. So return on total capital employed always needs to be compared to the interest rate on the loan. So the interest rate on the loan is 7,2%, but our return on investment on the loan is 16,9%. So we're utilizing loan funds to get a 16,9% return. And we're paying back that 7,2%. So that's a huge difference. So in other words, I've said this in all the other interpretation of financial information videos, return on total capital employed, it must be compared to the interest rate on the loan. That's that's imperative. So yeah, that is very good. Um, yeah, and all these shareholders, these haters can just shh, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Mike is cooking. 3.2.4, share capital and share and percentage holding. Percentage shareholding, we're referring now to information C and D. Let me change color. Okay, so there's C and D. Calculate Brent's Percentage shareholding on 28 Feb 2022. So that's Mike's advice, the issue and repurchase of shares here. Uh, D, Brent Flower and Karina Moss, like Kate Moss, are shareholders in the company, but they're not directors. None of their shares were repurchased on the 31st of August 2021. So that's Brent Flower and Karina Moss. So Brent owed, owned sorry, 300,000 shares. His percentage shareholding was 23.1% at the start of the year, but what was it at the end of the year? So we started with 300,000. There was a repurchase, we're gonna factor that in, and at year end, that is a terrible line, I'm so sorry for that one, is 1,325,000. So you started off with the 300,000 shareholding at the start of the year, at the end of the year, at the end of the year, the total company shareholding was 1,325,000. This repurchase, so the directors decided to issue additional shares to existing shareholders at 21 rand per share. So shareholders were allowed to purchase 10 shares for every 40 shares they, they owned. So that is a one is to four ratio. One is to four here in 300,000. That's basically 300,000 divided by four and that's how we get 75,000. It's just 300,000 divided by four. So 300,000 plus 75,000 over 1,325,000 and we just multiply that by 100 because we are working with a percentage here. Uh, let me just put the equal sign on this side because there's more space. It's 28,3%. That is Brent's new percentage shareholding. Brent and Karina decided that they would combine their votes at the upcoming annual general meeting, so the AGM, where all the shareholders meet up and make some decisions. Explain one possible reason for this decision. Why would they want to combine their votes? So this is a very interesting question. I haven't seen too many like this. So combining their shares gives them a clear majority, actually, of 54,7%. So this 28,3 plus Karina's 26,4, 28.3 plus 26.4 gives them 54.7. 54.7% 54 is greater than 50%. They have majority vote now. And the other shareholders would then earn the complement of that, which is 45.3%. And 
they would enjoy more than 50% of the voting rights. They'll be in a position to have more control over major decisions and influence these decisions. But if their shares combined were calculated at less than 50%, well, that's not majority. They can't exercise majority rule or majority power over, either, over, over everything. But yeah, that's the video. Nice little one here from Jesse Limited. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.